interesting discussion. Let me just bring it in here. A very interesting discussion where church leaders have been attacked by politicians, of course, about the matter of receiving the offertory in church, even of corrupt people. Think of that. Because the corrupt people is like offering to idols, isn't it? It's equally sinful. So these people have stolen money and they come to church and they give the offer and we receive it. So the politicians say, hmm. So the question is, should we reject an offer from a government official just in case it's dirty money? Chaplain. She's lucky she doesn't work in Kampala where most of them go. So should we? Mr. Fono Pondo, in his usual, I must admit he's very shallow in his arguments. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. But he's extremely shallow. Because he's, he, he has gone on this campaign to attack the church, and I did write an article last week in The Vision calling for sobriety. Because I think he doesn't understand the issues. In the zeal to defend political positions, he fails to reason. I'm ashamed that people like those have degrees. <laughs> Seriously. I don't read most of his articles, but I did read one and I thought to myself, is this what this man is saying? Surely he hasn't thought, what he, thought through what he's saying. So can the church receive the offertory from a government worker whose wealth may be tarnished by corruption? Or should the church first investigate? Where did you get this money? <laughs> whose mandate is it? Whose way did you get this money? <laughs> you see, that's what he's asking us to do. And that's why I say it's very shallow. Because are you going to ask us to first investigate and say, did you get that money rightly or wrongly? Now, the problem is, first of all, we, that is impracticable. Secondly, if that money passed on to this person rightly, how do you know that the person before did not pass it on wrongly? Thirdly, is that the mandate of the church? To fight corruption should be the mandate of government. Simple. The church has a voice. Whether they accept it or not, the church has a voice. And so we are free to speak. The gospel does not task us to investigate in matters that are civil, matters that belong to government. But it does mandate us to speak for the voiceless, to speak for the poor. That's the prophetic voice of the church. Paul says, all things are lawful for us. 